During the recent onset of cool temperatures, we had some of our expected friends show up in our gardens to do a little bit of feeding. And those friends we're talking about are neighborhood deer. And here in Oklahoma Gardening, we've come accustomed to them showing up this time of year and feeding a little bit on some of our vegetables. And we've even got where we'll plant a little extra just for them. However, this year, their appetites seem to have increased significantly. We found them feeding on our southern peas, where we've noticed some of their tracks. We've even seen them feeding on sweet potatoes, where they've fed on the leaflets and left the petiole standing. They even helped themselves to the strawberries, where they again fed on the leaves, leaving just the petioles. And next they found their way to our fall garden where we had a significant amount of coal crops. Here they were feeding on broccoli, on our cabbage, a little bit on Brussels sprouts, as well as some spinach and lettuce. So they've really found their way throughout the gardens. They've also managed to find their way over to our fruit orchard. And here I'm standing beside one of our cherry trees where the deer have actually fed on all the leaves that they could reach. And as you can see, they've stripped all the foliage off down on the bottom portion of the tree. And on some of our other trees, such as our nectarines and apricots and peaches, they've fed on the foliage as well as rubbed their horns on them, causing some damage to the bark. So we feel like it's time that we need to try some more of our remedies and, and different controls and trying to discourage the deer from feeding on some of our more valuable plants here in the garden. And I want to go over some of those with you right now. The first thing that we want to talk about that is very um, common and that you've actually seen here on Oklahoma Gardening in the past is using bars of soap where you actually drill a hole through the soap, leaving the wrapper on, and then trying to attach those to the trees. And the more fragrant soap, some of the little small bars that you can get at some of the motels or hotels actually work quite well. And some of the research has shown that this does quite a good job for deterring the deer for at least a few months. Another thing that some of the research has shown is actually taking human or dog hair and bagging up about an ounce in some kind of a container that will allow the odor to release. And we're going to try some of this by placing them around some of our vegetable gardens in different areas. And we just went to the local barber shop and asked if he'd save some of the hair from one of his day's work. The next thing would be repellents. And there's about 10 to 12 different kinds of repellents that you can buy on the market now for using on controlling deer. And we're going to show you one that you can make up yourself, and that's just using a tablespoon of hot sauce to a gallon of water, or using an anti-desiccant such as wilt-proof or vapor guard. And an anti-desiccant is something available at the commercial garden center that you use to help keep the plant from transpiring or, or desiccating. Uh, losing a lot of moisture during the, the hot summer times. But that just helps hold the hot sauce on and makes it a little bit bitter or taste bad where hopefully it will repel the deer. Now if these remedies don't work for us, the last thing that we're going to try is putting an electric fence about two feet off the ground around the ceramics of our Oklahoma Gardening Studio. And research from up in the Northeast has shown that placing a little bit of peanut butter mixed with wax on that electric wire will attract the deer, have them come over, they'll touch it, smell of it, and then it will shock them and discourage them from coming into the garden. So that will be our last resort if some of these other remedies don't work. Of course, it would be nice if we could fence the entire place off, but keep in mind we do like to see the deer as well. Now this time of year, one other thing that you want to be cautious about that can cause damage to newly planted trees or those that aren't quite increased in the diameter of their trunk would be rabbits. And we've got a persimmon tree here that, that's still coming along and it's pretty small. And rabbits have a tendency, especially on fruit trees and some of your newly planted ornamental trees, to come in and feed on the bark to get that sap going and feed on them during the winter time. 
So the things that you need to try to do is to protect the trunk and that can be done by just a, a tree wrap that you can buy commercially just by wrapping it around the trunk of the tree. There's also commercial weed whacker guards but some that come longer that unfoil that you put around that protect the uh, tree trunks. And also you can purchase hardware cloth that will work and help protect those trees too. But one thing that's real inexpensive is just using some aluminum foil out of the kitchen and try to put the shiny side out and just wrap that around the tree trunk and you want to go up high enough so the rabbits can't reach it. And not only will that protect the rabbits, but also that will help reflect the sun during the winter months to prevent any sun skull damage. Now I want to take you over to a couple of other pests that are affecting us here in the gardens and show you what those look like and those are some insects that we want to talk about. A couple of other insects that are showing up here at our gardens and also throughout the state are called box elders and also the praying mantis and also the walking stick. As you can see all along our barn here, we've got the box elders, which are an insect that actually has sucking mouth parts, and it will be found more on trees, on the trunk, and sometimes feeding on the berries of different plants. However, the box elder is really not considered a harmful pest, and you'll notice it more this time of year congregating around the outside of your house trying to find a place to keep warm and over winter. But really, there's no need to worry about trying to control them at all. They're not harmful to our plants, and they're really not harmful to our homes, especially if they get inside. Another insect that we're seeing a lot of is the praying mantis, or here we've got a walking stick. But both of them are very predominant here at our gardens, and we're glad to see these insects because they are actually considered beneficial insects, feed on aphids and other insects that actually are harmful to our plants. And we've seen the walking sticks and praying mantis on a lot of our fruit trees and on our vegetables. We've just had a large population of those insects this year, which we're real pleased to have. Well, that's all the time we have on today's show. We'll hope you join us next week right here on Oklahoma Gardening. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel and join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.